Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, dear participants of the forum, uh, I would like to welcome all of you here. We are going to start the session titled as The Rise of Ethnic Cultural Diversity in the Contemporary World and the Significance of Multiculturalism Policy. Uh, I am honored to moderate uh, this session. I am Etibar Najafov, head of the Department of Interethnic Relations, uh, Multiculturalism and Religious Issues of the administration of the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Uh, I would like to introduce to you our distinguished speakers, uh, Kamal Abdullayev, the Chair of the Board of Trustees of Baku International Multiculturalism Center, Rector of Azerbaijan University of Languages. Mubariz Gurbanlı, Chairman of the State Committee on Work with Religious Association of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Rabbi Schneir, uh, Mark Schneier, President of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding. Uh, Fuad Nurulayev, Deputy Chairman of the Caucasus Muslim Office. Juan Carlos Mendes Ariola, the founder and president of the Church of Action, the organizer of the U.S. Congress Immigration Forum. Eno um, Antero Ariola, member of Helsinki Uisama Regional Council and member of Wanta City Council, journalist. And Birgit Weisberger, head of the branch of Interna uh, Baku International Multiculturalism Center in Germany. Jeanne Scott, uh, head of branch of Baku International Mul Multiculturalism Center in the United States, the advisor of uh, Washington Law Association. Uh, as you may know, one of the main uh, important features of the contemporary globalization is the rise of ethnic cultural diversity in the world. Ethnic cultural diversity was formed under the influence of uh, historical, geographical, cultural, socio-economic, and, cult uh, and political uh, factors. Ethnic cultural uh, diversity in itself is positive phenomena because it is based on ethnic cultural values, which uh, are the form of uh, human behavior and also uh, ethnic cultural values uh, form uh, what outlook of people direct their activity. However, ethnic cultural diversity should be regulated properly by the state. Otherwise, it may lead to some conflict, including uh, conflicts based on ethnic religious basis. Uh, Azerbaijan is considered to be one of the centers of multiculturalism, tolerance, and uh, Azerbaijan uh, is famous for its multiculturalism policy. Yesterday, at the opening ceremony of, the, of this forum, His Excellency Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Ilham Aliyev, the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, noted that multiculturalism is a mode of life of Azerbaijani people. Multiculturalism is a state policy. Indeed, multiculturalism uh, is a state policy uh, of Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijan is one of a few states in the world in which multiculturalism is state policy. Speaking of the uh, uh, significance of multiculturalism policy, uh, it should be noted that it is directed to protect ethnic cultural diversity in the society. It is directed to preserve ethnic cultural values in the society. And Azerbaijan uh, uh, is conducting this policy for many years. The founder of this policy is uh, all national leader of Azerbaijani people, Heydar Aliyev. And now this policy has been uh, successfully conducted by His Excellency President Ilham Aliyev. Now I would like to give floor to our uh, speakers. Uh, the first in my list, uh, Kamal Abdullayev, the chair of the Board of Trustees of Baku International Multiculturalism Center. 
Teşekkür ederim. Thank you, Etipor. First of all, I would like to salutate and greet cordially our distinguished guests. And I would like to start my presentation on behalf of the Board of Trustees members with the congratulations speech to Ilham Aliyev, Mr. President. In his yesterday's speech, he highlighted the position of the Multicultural Center and highly appreciated our work. And I believe that this appreciation is not appreciation of the merits of the center, but the entire appreciation of the multiculturalism movement across the country. And the author of the movement is Mr. President himself. Dear guests, I would like to share my insights on multiculturalism policy. You know that uh, national security policy incorporates a lot of uh, elements, uh, transportation safety, economic safety, energy safety, food safety. They all unitedly are very vital for the survival of the state. And this system also should incorporate as its integral part the multiculturalism values. And we need to see them as the entire setup of the country. Any state tries and seeks to secure their energy, uh, national and transportation security. And they also should retain multiculturalism richness. And multicultural policy includes any actions aimed at uh, different peoples, irrespective of their gender, irrespective of their language or religion. The if situation with a tension between different people aggravates, it will finally lead to the conflicts between ethnic groups. Most recently, in many European states, we face uh, ethnic, ethnic nationalism, Islamophobia, xenophobia, and they're rising enough. What do we call multiculturalism is based on a set of principles. These are as follows. These are the principles that help government and the state to function as the entire body. They are as follows. All confessions and religious communities, but also their infidels, should be treated equally in the country. In one of the statements, Mr. President, stated that uh, in many countries, people approach him and ask, what we, different confession leaders and infidels, could coexist in one country in the spirit of peace and security? And what's the response to this question? The response might appear even strange for Azari, because uh, present-day Azaris deeply incorporates principles as a part of their genome. It's like uh, air we swallow. It's like uh, water we quaff. But there is no alternate response. There is only one response. This multiculturalism environment is strongly backed by the equal treatment of the head of the state to all conventions without any discrimination. And the equal political treatment stipulates for tolerant treatment to all confessions and religious communities. So, in brief, multiculturalism security is strongly embedded into our policy and is based on equal treatment to different communities. Secondly, there is another principle of multiculturalism, and it's based on state support to different communities. First and foremost, we highlighted the treatment to the societies and communities. And now it's high time to proceed to the principle of uh, equal treatment to different infidels. 
We live in peace and serenity, and we share our griefs and achievements. We are also incorporate the present day heroes of the ancient Caucasian Albania, Udi, Christians, Lesbians, Talishe, Kurdi, Avarians, Russians, and most recently Germans managed to turn this country their native land. At present, in marked contrast to the separity that claim the portion of our land, they reject all these unfair statements. Sometimes some people account for the number that might be settled in one village only. For example, Hina, Lugi, and Jeki. And this is another ground and another test for our history. And all national leader had early once stated, the stronger we united as different nation, the greater contribution we could make for the entire universe. Present day shaping democratic society strongly contributes to our multiculturalism. Everyone's identity does not hold him or her to feel as natural. Everyone is enabled and entitled to write and read in their native language. Article 44 on ethical identity specifies that every person is entitled to protect his or her ethical identity. No one can be forced to change ethical identity. A representative of different ethnic groups in Azerbaijan currently represented in all areas, in pol policy, in politics, uh, sports, culture, virtually in all areas of our daily life. One of the key principles of multiculturalism security is underlined in uh, retaining uh, the ethnical and cultural diversity and support rendered to it. All ethnical minorities have got their languages, and their languages should be explored and studied. Within these frameworks, the national minorities do not feel they are strangers in this land. Azerbaijan turned into the spiritual space and room for their operations, and this is a strategical mainstream of our policy, multicultural policy. In light of Azerbaijani case, once again, it is that if we follow the principles of multiculturalism, we could get aspired to extract from the depth of our history the enormous potential we are endowed with. And on April 24, 25, 2016, we held the seventh global forum of Alliance of Civilization, and this idea was sound by that many times at that time. Uh, many nations still cannot uh, get rid of dichotomy of ours and others, but this dichotomy lost its power in our land in medieval ages. This confrontation or the tension might be only mitigated. Dear friends, today, I don't want to waste your time in order to narrate the multicultural, multiculturalism history in Azerbaijan. The head of the state is a guarantor of uh, multiculturalism protection uh, in Azerbaijan. And once again, we managed to state that we could be uh, multicultural providers. Uh, some people who do not have idea of uh, multiculturalism and of the essence of our study state uh, can have misconceptions and just would like to narrate a story. Just some 15 years ago, a rabbi worked in one of the country learned that he would be commissioned to Azerbaijan. He was stuck with amazement. He was really 
horrified and did his best in order to change the commission. I asked the management to be recommissioned to some other state because Azerbaijan is suggested to be a Muslim country who could not live and work in daily garment he used to wear and he is scared about his family. Uh, later, Rabbe narrated his story to me. He told me what happened for 10 years. I don't want to uh, share additional uh, information about this, Rabbi. Just for information, Rabbi uh, addressed Azerbaijan government in order to get Azerbaijan citizenship. Uh, this is what shapes Azerbaijan multiculturalism. Welcome to Azerbaijan multiculturalism. Thank you, Kamal. Maybe it's high time to disclose the name of the Rabbi you cited. Maybe everyone should know this Rabbi. The floor is given to Mubariz Gurbanli, the chair of the State Committee on Work with Religions of Azerbaijan Republic. Thank you, distinguished Etibar. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, our guest uh, coming from different countries on behalf of the State Committee, I would like to salute you all. Uh, also, I would like to uh, give my thanks and just appreciate the coming of the media workers. Our distinguished academician, Kamal, uh, elaborated uh, Azerbaijani-based multiculturalism notion from a scientific and academic uh, perspective, but also he disclosed some practical facts. I wished I spoke about the ethnic, uh, national, and cultural diversity globally, and as Azerbaijan related pines, our civilization, in contrast to the previous civilization, has different characteristics and previously different civilizations once habited in on the globe and they created some artifacts and we are of the human beings of the fundable new globe once again cultural ethnical and national differences still persist and the way to get rid from these gaps and differences lies in a deeper cultivation of the multiculturalism values to the humanity. Otherwise, some might misuse these factors. I mean, ethnic and cultural differences followed by religious differences in order to set radical groups and aggravate the tension and discord in order to create fatalities for the globe. In 20th century, witness to devastating wars of First World War and Second World War, many people slayed, and they were victims of the racism, nationalism, and aggravation of the differences between uh, nations and religious, which were inspired by so-called uh, foreign ideologies. Currently, globe's population accounts for 7.5 billion. We are about to finish the first uh, <clears throat> 25th, uh, 20th century, uh, anniversary of the 21st uh, century. Just if we check statistics on the early 20th, 20th century, uh, the population account is 1 billion. Just, uh, just for one centennial only, it rebounded to 7.5 billion. Now, with these rise in population, we witnessed so many technological advances and changes, and new threads emerged. Uh, currently, we're living in the Industrial Revolution version fourth, and we are treating the path and the stage where the cultural, moral values should be definitely at the forefront of salvation. And this phase of development, we should force 
our efforts in order to provide a moral and multicultural wisdom. Azerbaijan is the forefront of these activities, as you know. You definitely know that multiculturalism values uh, are not new enough. However, when it comes to a practical implementation of these not new and many years ago designed uh, notions, some country leaders stated that multiculturalism is outdated, specifically on the backdrop of the refugees crisis. We heard the notions that the fusion of the different cultures and ideas would put us at extreme risk, and some political leaders even claimed, uh, claimed that multicultural values are n do not fit into present date needs. And once again, we could witness the presence of the people who are aspired to get their place at the political arena. Therefore, multiculturalism should be highly appreciated globally. And not surprisingly, His Excellency, Mr. President, put forward an initiative of holding this forum. And you definitely know that this forum is held annually uh, from is held uh, permanently since 2007. In 2010, global world leaders were assembled for the first summit. This year, uh, there would be another summit of the world religious leaders held. And once again, people who visit our country claim that our differences uh, are not accurate. Just some statistics claim that uh, there would be some 3,000 or 4,000 ethnic groups globally. And there were some contradictions and different statements because um, actually the number of the ethnic groups decline as a result of assimilation and merging with others. What should we do in order to protect ethnical groups and retain their culture? You know that globalization also provokes some threats. In order to protect these ethnic groups from uh, these threats, we need to secure multiculturalism values. So multiculturalism should always be put at the forefront of our actions. Otherwise, we could witness the rise of other ideologies. Azerbaijan plays a crucial role in this regard. As was stated, in our countries, more the representatives of more than 80 ethnic groups reside, and all their cultures, uh, language, and article factor secure. Despite of the Armenian aggression to Azerbaijan, uh, currently Armenians reside in Azerbaijan and their uh, intermarriages and so on. Also, there is a harmony or the common accord between the religions in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan get rid of the communist ideology and get the status of the independent state. And from the first years of independence, specifically after all national leaders had early of coming back to the office, a new constitution was, uh, was adopted, which specified the peaceful coexistence and protection of the different groups residing in Azerbaijan. And protection of the groups is a product of the government. Once Azerbaijan had only 17 masks, and currently uh, we house 2,005 uh, masks and 14 churches, seven synagogues function, uh, 33 religious communities besides Islam uh, function in Azerbaijan. If some of them are Christian denominations we, that do not function in Europe or any other continents. Uh, multicultural values might play a role in diversity. And we could explore this issue by example of Azerbaijan. 
In the statement of uh, His Excellency Mr. President Ilham Aliyev, it was noted that there is no alternative to multiculturalism. Alternative is xenophobia, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and racism. If we decline these devastating ideologies, and quite naturally we should decline them because it's a prerequisite for the global development, we should unanimously accept multiculturalism values and follow them. At uh, these events, at uh, these fora, uh, we need to elaborate this idea. Wish you all the best in your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Mubariz. Floor to uh, Mar uh, Rabbi Mark Schneier, president of the Foundation of Ethnic Understanding. He's a great uh, friend of Azerbaijan. Uh, he did a lot to disseminate uh, reliable, true information about Azerbaijan, not only in the United States, but in all over the world. Please. Thank you. Good afternoon. First, I want to uh, thank President Aliyev, Culture Minister Gareyev. I'm here with so many wonderful and distinguished friends, and I feel like I'm back home. Uh, I was just with my friend, Mr. Corbanli. We had a historic mission back in March, and I realize I've been spending more time in Baku than back in New York, but this has become my, uh, my second home. Uh, friends, the Jewish people, we just completed the observance of the festival of Passover. And at the Passover meal, we recite the following declaration. How in every generation for 3,300 years since our liberation from slavery in Egypt, in every generation there has risen enemies that have looked to destroy the Jewish people. But God protects us throughout history. Today, in 2019, once again, we are experiencing a rise in anti-Semitism, particularly in the West, in Europe, in France, the Yellow Vest movement is very much founded in anti-Semitism in terms of certain rhetoric and statements that are being made. Recently in Belgium, they had a carnival and they had a float of two Hasidic rabbis grabbing money bags. We have our issues now in the United Kingdom with Jeremy Corbyn and other members of his party. Germany is reporting a heightened rise in anti-Semitic attacks. And now in the United States, the synagogue that was attacked in Pittsburgh six months ago that led to the death of 11 worshipers, Jewish congregants, and just this past Saturday, the attack on the synagogue right outside of San Diego, California. And as anti-Semitism is rising in the West, the good news that there are so many new opportunities for better Muslim-Jewish relations now in the Islamic world. And this is very much a testament to Azerbaijan because of the 57 Muslim nations Azerbaijan has served time and time again as the example for improving relations between Muslims and Jews. Just yesterday, the Jewish people observed Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. It was here in Azerbaijan. How many thousands of Jews did 
Azerbaijan rescue from the Nazis, how many Azerbaijani families took in Jews that were refugees of Nazi Europe? And then among the 57 Muslim nations, when it comes to supporting the state of Israel, Azerbaijan once again is number one. And then I want to just say to Layla, you need to express to your most distinguished father, on behalf of my wife, Simi, and I, that last night we had dinner at the new kosher restaurant in Baku that opened this week, thanks to Rabbi and Mrs. Siegel, who took us to the new kosher restaurant. Who could imagine that in the great Muslim majority country of Azerbaijan, that in its capital city of Baku, there will be such a fantastic, such a fabulous kosher restaurant. Once again, Azerbaijan is setting the example that other Muslim and Arab nations are beginning to follow. Many of you know of my involvement, particularly in the Gulf, with Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Bahrain and Oman and all the countries that Qatar has asked to open a kosher restaurant. The emir of Qatar and Hassan al-Thwani, the head of the Secretary General of the World Cup, has asked to open a kosher restaurant in Doha for the 2022 World Cup. That is a direct result of Azerbaijan. The fact that the king of Bahrain has asked me to help preserve and build Jewish life in Manama, that is a direct result of Azerbaijan. The fact that Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, when the Pope came to Abu Dhabi and I represented the Jewish people in Abu Dhabi back in February, and Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed is now building a big interfaith center called the Abraham House, that is a direct result of Azerbaijan. The fact that the Secretary General of the Muslim World League in Saudi Arabia, Muhammad al Isa, just announced yesterday that he's going to visit Auschwitz. This is the Secretary General of the Muslim World League. That is a direct result of the impact that Azerbaijan is making today, not only in interreligious and intercultural dialogue, but bringing Muslims and Jews together because we understand our common faith and our common fate. Let me conclude with the following. On Wednesday, back in the United States, a groundbreaking poll survey was announced about how do Americans feel about Muslims in the United States. It was the Jewish community. The vast majority of American Jews that had the most positive feelings for Muslims more than any other faith community in the United States, and Muslims felt the same way about Jews. Compare that to only 22% of evangelical Christians that express any interest in reaching out to Muslims. The Jewish community, the vast majority, were the ones to express these positive feelings, again, the common faith and the common fate. And this session is addressing the significance of multiculturalism policy in its regulation. Four quick examples how both the Muslim and the Jewish community are changing policies in the U.S. First, you know that New York City the largest school system in the United States, over one million children, because of the growth of the Muslim community and because of the support of the Jewish community, that today in New York City, two Muslim holidays are now given off to all schools in New York, Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. That's coming from the largest the largest school system in the United States. 
Do you know that because of the Muslim holidays in the United Nations, now for the first time, just enacted this year, the United Nations no longer meets on Yom Kippur. It is now closed on Yom Kippur. That is a result of the fact that the United Nations is closed for the two Muslim holidays. Then we have some challenges. The anti-Muslim immigration bill enacted by the president. Yet, what ha who have been the greatest protectors and defenders against this bill on behalf of Muslims is the Jewish community. And finally, a coalition of Muslim and Jewish leaders have now brought to the United States Congress a bill to combat anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim bigotry. My friends, I began with the festival of Passover and I will conclude with a message from Passover. If you recall, some of you in the Bible, that according to biblical tradition, that as part of the exodus from Egypt, God visited 10 plagues, 10 plagues, upon the ancient Egyptians. The ninth plague was the plague of darkness. And our commentators explain it was a very unusual form of darkness. It was not a darkness that affected the eyes. It was a darkness that affected the heart. That physically they were able to see. But they did not care for one another. They did not feel for each other. And that, my friends, is the most terrible plague of all. And as Muslims and Jews, we must recognize the challenge to keep aglow the light of understanding and caring. I know that next week you will usher in the holy season of Ramadan. Ramadan is not only a time of introspection. Ramadan is not only a time of self-evaluation, the self-examination, but Ramadan summons us not only to come closer to God, but to come closer to one another. It is in this spirit, in this spirit, that I wish all of you a Ramadan Mubarak, and I pray that in the spirit of Ramadan, we will see each and every person who is a child of God, just as we are, and who is entitled to be treated with the dignity, the justice, and the compassion that we claim for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Mark Schneier, for kind words. Uh, in one of his uh, speeches, Excellency uh, President Ilham Aliyev noted that uh, multiculturalism, uh, our experience of Azerbaijan in the field of multiculturalism is being studied by foreign states. And uh, by his degree, uh, from uh, 2014, May uh, f uh, 14th, he, uh, he ordered to create Baku International Multiculturalism Center. This center uh, has been playing a very important role in uh, <clears throat> providing some opportunities for uh, foreigners to study Azerbaijani experience. As an example of this experience, I would like to note that uh, by the efforts of this center, uh, about 20 foreign universities organized uh, courses on Azerbaijani multiculturalism uh, and also uh, seven states uh, in, uh, in the world uh, established branches of this center. One of this center uh, functions uh, presently in the United States and I would like to give floor to the head of this branch, American branch of Baku International Multiculturalism Center, to Jeanne Scott. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and to uh, His Excellency in his absence, and to Her Excellency in her presence. And I also want to acknowledge Dr. Kamal Abdullayev, who has been a phenomenal mentor through this process, uh, and to Ravan Hasanov, the executive director of the Baku International Multiculturalism Center, 
what we lovingly call in the U.S. the mothership, and also to Chairman Gorbanli, who shared with the Los Angeles uh, delegation uh, on yesterday uh, just how important this issue of multiculturalism is in Azerbaijan. I wanted to speak with you today uh, about just a few things. Uh, we are in significant times in the U.S., and my dear colleague Rabbi Schneier has spoken about many of those from the division and separation that is so evident in the United States right now, from the unprecedented migration of unaccompanied children, particularly across our southern border, to the racism, the anti-Semitism, the xenophobia, the Islamophobia, the gender inequality that is going on every single day. And yet there is hope in the average American that we can continue to seek to live up to the great values upon which that nation was founded, that every human being is created equal in the eyes of the Almighty. We often speak about intercultural dialogue, and today we're talking about it as it relates to moving toward action. But I think still I ask the question, to what end? It can be a powerful tool, dialogue, in bringing people together, but if, if it is not pointed toward true reconciliation, then conflict mitigation will never come about, and the promise that we all seek of human solidarity will always be just out of reach. So this dialogue that we encourage out of the Baku Center in the U.S., it encourages and yet it even forces us to look at ourselves and each, and each other in deep, discerning ways and to examine what we must do internally first. The rabbi ended talking about the darkness of the heart, and that is where some of my few minutes begins, because it is in the heart of man that this situation will find its greatest resolution. And as we think about the change of the heart that must happen, not only in the United States, but in nations around the world, and we think about moving toward reconciliation of many of the conflicts that have resulted from our lack of light in the heart, from our lack of loving and understanding each other, it brings to my mind the great words of Bishop Desmond Tutu, who once said that this work of reconciliation is a risky undertaking but it is truly the only path to deep cultural, natural, and global healing. I want to examine for just a few minutes some of the practical ways that the work of the Baku Center has carried out the concept of multiculturalism in the United States. In the midst of some very deep historical, cultural, ethnic, and religious divisions and biases, We've been blessed in the United States not only to have the guidance of the people here in Baku, but also to work alongside Consul General Nasimi Agaev, who is the Consul General to the United States out of Los Angeles. And in partnering with him, we've been able to do quite a few things in the little bit of time that we've been established. The center was established in 2018, just a little over a year ago. And in this first year, when it was first established, I must tell you, I was aggressively approached by a national group who said to me, why are you doing this? Don't you know what the Azeris are doing to the Armenians? And I asked them to meet with me because I think it's important as we do this work of interfa interfaith and intercultural dialogue that when we come upon attacks, we don't just allow the attacks to keep going back and forth over the email, but that we look at each other eye to eye, human to human, and even yet look into the heart of people and really tell the story of what's going on in this country and how we need to expand this story to places around the globe, even within the U.S. And so what we've been doing in the U.S. over the last year really falls into three categories cultural forums, 
scholarly forums, and forums with elected officials. The cultural forums have been in partnership with some of our statewide interfaith organizations, such as the Arizona Interfaith Movement, the African American Christian Clergy Coalition, uh, the Jewish Federation is actually coming on board with us for a forum this year, and many others. In those forums, we get to really talk face to face about what does it mean to become together interculturally? What are the biases, the very fundamental things that we need to address and overcome so that we can really come together as human beings? On the scholarly side, this year we were blessed to partner with Mesa Community College. There was actually a scholar from Baku State University who came to the US and we did a forum with scholars from 20 countries on multiculturalism, promoting the Azari model as one of the best in the world. On the scholarly side, we have an emerging partnership with Arizona State University, the largest university in the United States, and the Council on Religious Advisors at that university. The Council on Religious Advisors is a multi-faith council that ministers and reaches the students, some 100,000 of them now, on issues across all types of sectors. And we'll be doing another forum with them this year. And on the legislative side, we had the Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives actually visit Baku. Many of you might remember Speaker Mesnard. And when he came back, he partnered with the Baku Center and the Arizona Faith Network to do a legislative forum with lawmakers and with faith leaders on multiculturalism and how the Azari model really is one of the best in the nation. There was also a resolution passed by the President of the Senate, uh, at that time President John Kavanaugh. And in June of this year, we'll be doing a forum with one of our congressmen, Ruben Gallegos. Some of you might remember that Ruben Gallegos served with the Azerbaijani military in one of the recent theaters. For 2019 and 20, we're looking at greater efforts toward re reconciliation through dialogue, cooperation, and action. We're looking to engage with additional university partners and hopeful to integrate the multiculturalism curriculum into coursework in some of our community colleges as well as some of our universities. We've been doing some multicultural millennial cafes with young people where they get together and they express, express themselves in dance, music, and spoken word, and we're hoping to expand those. And we would really like to do an exchange between American and Azari youth so that this concept can be built on and sustained across both nations. The Consul General uh, Nasimi has opened the door to the city of Seattle and to King County where Azerbaijan was honored just last month. So we'll be doing some work there too. And I just want to end with a short poem that was written by one of our millennials. She asked me if I would share it when she knew I was coming here. And in the millennial cafes, you know, the young people, they don't always just sit around at tables like this and talk. They like to really engage artistically. And so I'll read this one uh, to you. Just very, it's a very short one, but I think one that you might enjoy as I close. It's entitled Multiculturalism. Many manifestations of human intellectual achievement that maintains conditions suitable for growth. Our oath to humankind to be defined not by the color of our skin, but by our content within, to not sin against our fellow man, but to take my fellow man by the hand and stand, united, plighted to see unity among all beings, freeing our hearts from debilitating hate that separates, joining our lives together with love, letting the spirit of equity descend as a dove, anointing our heads with the oil of inclusion, O oh, mighty creator, Bless our multicultural union. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give floor to uh, John Carlos Mendes Ariola, the founder and president of the Church of Action, the organizer of U.S. Congress Immigration Forum. Please. 
Hello, I am very happy to be here. I, uh, I want to thank the Aliyab family for uh, hosting us over the years. I'm, I'm losing count of how many times I've been here in Azerbaijan. It's been that many. And I want to thank, to our, uh, thank our friends here at the table who have been so gracious in inviting me over and over. Um, our topic this afternoon is about the rise of ethnic cultural diversity in the contemporary world the significance of multiculturalism policies and its regulation. I've had a career in education and in religion for the last 35 years. And during this time, I have learned many good lessons. The lessons that I have learned is that unless we work together, we destroy one another. I grew up in a um, uh, evangelical church both of my, my parents were missionaries in a very legalistic uh, ambiance. And during uh, my time as, uh, as a member of one of our congregations, I started visiting an, a church that was very fundamental. The pastor there was a very fundamentalistic pastor. And um, this pastor didn't like other Christian denominations. He talked bad about every church in town. Every church had a problem. The Presbyterians, the Baptists, the Lutherans, and the Catholics. Oh, no, the, he, he would not allow his congregants to, to participate with other, other Christian denominations. And in high school, I started developing a different uh, mentality. I said, that cannot be right. How can we have you know, animosity and, and anger and, and uh, don't like this and don't like that and this one this and this one that. So I, I asked the pastor, I said, is it possible for me and you to, to get a cup of coffee and sit down and dialogue for a little bit? And the pastor said, of course. I said, pastor, why do you have such, so much hatred for all the Christian denominations? Aren't we supposed to be Christian, love one another? And he says, well, you know, they don't live the life. They don't live according to the book. They don't do this. They don't do that. And, and he had a list of things that, uh, that uh, made other Christians not Christian. And I said, Pastor, but even in our church, we have a lot of divisions. Even in our church, we have group here, groups there. And uh, we don't even get along in our own church. I said, so by your definition, Pastor, only you and I are going to heaven. And I said, and pastor, if you, if you have all that hatred and animosity in your heart, I don't think you're going to heaven. I think I'm the only one going to heaven. And, and he said, you know, what a lesson. What a lesson. But, you know, over the years, I have learned. First, I started with my own church. Then I started reaching out to other denominations. Then I started an ecumenical group. Then we moved from the ecumenical group to an interfaith group. And now I have excellent relations with all different denominations, especially Muslims, Jews coming to the table. And I do a lot of speaking on Friday nights. I have my circuit of mosques and synagogues that I visit on Friday nights. I'm very busy speaking at these different places. But there's a lot of movement in our world today. And uh, every region in the, in the world is having issues. In Latin America, we have hotspots in Mexico. It is plagued with drug lords who are destroying villages and going into villages and destroying and, and fighting for control in geographical areas. A lot of innocent people are in the crossfire of all these bullets. In Central America, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, we have a tremendous need of all these Indian groups that are moving away from what is going on because powerful countries have come into their lands and have taken over their lands. I went to San Marcos in Guatemala, and I noticed how Canada was taking gold out of those mountains, out of the Indians, 
the, the gold belongs to them, but Canada is taking that gold from Guatemala, and so is Spain. And, and the people are migrating when they have all the resources. They have beautiful land, they have beautiful lakes, they have everything they need. But powerful countries are coming into their land to take away what belongs to them. And then those people are migrating to the United States, going through Mexico, and having opposition at the border because the president will not, will not allow them to come in. But yet we're destroying their land, we're taking away what belongs to them, and then we don't want them at our border. I just spent 10 days in Iraq visiting the people in Iraq. These wars are destroying the native lands and the people need to go somewhere because they're looking for opportunities and access. And it is important that, that uh, forums like this one address those issues. And I am so proud of Azerbaijan and the work that you're doing in this country to promote peace and harmony. That is the reason that I keep coming back to this uh, great nation because I have seen the work that you have been doing. I've been a, a lecturer at the university with Kamal. I've lectured in other uh, universities here in, in Azerbaijan because I know that, the, that we move from dialogue into action only by taking action. And when you see the young people in this country, I now can claim that I am an Azerbaijani because I was just baptized in water a few minutes ago by one of the young ladies <laughs> that was moving the water. Azerbaijan is a great country, and we need to follow this model and, and the policies and regulations because nothing produces nothing. But if we take action, we will see results. And this new generation of global students are learning how to get along with people from other nations. Our language may be different, our culture may be different, but we're all seeking the same. We are seeking to live in peace and harmony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I would like to give floor to uh, Eino Antero Erola, please. Thank you very much, distinguished Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our Azerbaijani host for invitation to this interesting, important, very topical event. It's always a great pleasure to be here in Azerbaijan, and for many times I've been kind of enchanted by the atmosphere of this country. It kind of invites me again and again with the words of famous Azerbaijani singer Muslim Magomayev, and I quote him in Russian, Ti mnie zavyosh Azerbaijan, ti vam mnie payosh Azerbaijan, kak agni tvoi svetli, kak slava tvoi tepli. And as a society, Azerbaijan has chosen its line. As we know, and as we have heard already many times today, it emphasizes multiculturalism, tolerance, and dialogue of cultures and religions as its official policy. And I think these universal values are needed more than ever in Europe and in its vicinity, and I would say in the whole world. They cannot be, however, just empty words or slogans for political consumption. Unfortunately, it seems that in Europe, political demand for multiculturalism and tolerance is gradually decreasing. Just one example. In the next election of the European Parliament, political forces that totally reject multiculturalism and consider it as their main adversary can win up to 30, uh, third of the seats in the parliament. You can say that uh, political uh, te tectonic plates in Europe are shaking internally and externally. There, is, uh, increasing, there are increasing tensions on the southern borders of Europe for already years, the influx of refugees, asylum seekers, and immigrants through Mediterranean uh, has tested the borders of Europe, but also the tolerance of many European countries. But for people fleeing their countries, this has become a sorrowful uh, tragedy. Last year, almost 2,300 people were lost at sea trying to reach the shores of Europe. More people died last year on the Mediterranean in one single month 
than on Berlin Wall through it, throughout its 28 years of existence. Um, I mentioned the rise of the far-right populism. Uh, their agenda and rhetoric are much about discrimination and downright racism. But I'm not quite sure if this is the real reason why most of the voters, their voters, support them. Some voters are, of course, tempted by the message of discrimination and intolerance, but I don't think that this is maybe the real point. I don't think that discrimination is the catchword here, I mean, in the behind of the success, political success of the far-right populists. There are other reasons that maybe we should take into consideration. There is a sense of uncertainty and injustice also in economic sense in many of the populations in Europe. Globalization is taking away jobs, people's livelihood is at stake, there are cuts in social security, public services and pensions. People think that the immigrants come to compete about the same jobs and social welfare. For years already, political and economic elites in European countries have preached austerity and cuts in public spending. Then, suddenly, a huge number of ref refugees and asylum seekers come to Europe, one million in Germany alone in 2015. Some, some of the people then ask, why the government has money for them, although we have been told that only cuts and austerity is needed? And at this point, the populist far right is ready to name scapegoats. And as Wikipedia describes scapegoats, and we often re refer, of course, nowadays to Wikipedia, if people are frustrated or unhappy, they target their hostility to groups or individuals who are unpopular, distinguishable, or powerless. And this is exactly what is happening. This is what the far right says to their uh, electorate. You are miserable, miserable because immigrants are taking every, everything you have. Then there is also another aspect, uh, issue, issues concerning sec security on the state level, but also in people's everyday life. Increasing threat of violent extremism and terrorism has become a reality in, in most of the uh, European societies. Uh, especially terrorism that uses Islam as a pretext, and I underlined pretext for its purposes, means uh, growth potential for the far right. And then again, vice versa, the Islamophobia incited by the far right means growth potential for the Islamic extremists. So these two sides kind of need and feed each other. There are also, of course, causes for terrorism, and I would say that religion or uh, religiously motivated hatred is not necessarily the most important of them. I had the chance to visit uh, Morocco quite recently where, the, um, where one of the aims of, of our trip was to get acquainted on how Morocco is tackling violent extremism. I had the chance to meet with famous Moroccan Islamic scholar Ahmed Abadi and he explained in very detailed manner the causes behind violent ex ex extremism. Uh, how did, for example, uh, ISIS slash Daesh recruit young people to go, its, go to its so-called caliphate in Syria and Iraq? Uh, they were tempted with issues related to lost, lost digni dignity, low self-esteem, livelihood, and lack, lack of jobs. According to Mr. Abadi, ISIS could have uh, told, uh, could told, tell young men and women in Europe that in, in, in your home countries in Europe, you're nothing. Come to us and we'll make you a great <coughs> war hero or a commander. In Europe, you don't have money, job or education, but come to us and the Caliphate will give you everything you need. So in conclusion, when we analyze the electorate of the far right or causes of violent extremism, intolerance and terrorism, we cannot and we must not forget the economic and social roots of the both phenomena. Only by tackling social and economic inequality within European societies, we can also tackle causes of ex extremism and populism. And finally, during these uh, two days, uh, we've heard a lot about Azerbaijani model of multiculturalism and dialogue. I want to add something uh, by telling just a couple of words about Finnish model of dialogue, autonomy, and so supporting language identity. I will mention three points. First of all, Finland is a military uh, non-aligned country 
and I know I'm going a bit far from today's agenda, but nevertheless, one, one of the key elements of the Finnish foreign policy is dialogue, even in hard, difficult circumstances. In the peak of the crisis in and around in Ukraine in the spring, beginning of the spring of 2014, our president kept lines of communication open both to Ukraine and to Russia, although this was uh, uh, heavily criticized by some EU countries. Our line is that there, if there are problems, it is always better to talk than to build uh, confrontation. This also enabled us to host the summit of Presidents Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin in Helsinki in summer 2018. You can have many opinions about the summit is, itself and its results, sure, but from a perspective of, of a small country, that presidents of two con contentious superpowers are talking is an achievement itself. Another point is the example of all and islands between Finland and Sweden. Uh, there was already 100 years ago a strong separatist, mo separatist movement in Ireland who wanted the islands <laughs> to join Sweden, mainly because of all of the people on the island speak Swedish. And the, this, this dispute was settled not in the United Nations but already in the League of Nations in, uh, in uh, 1921. Ireland has a broad autonomy, they have their own parliament, they decide on, on their internal affairs, Swedish is the official language, they have tax benefits, and maybe most importantly, it is a demilitarized zone. Uh, but there is no question that all and islands would separate from the Republic of, of Finland. Now, I don't want to say to Nagorno-Karabakh or South Ossetia or Abkhazia or Donbas or Crimea or uh, Transnistria that here is a model for you. What I'm saying is that this is just our example which uh, all of you are free to study if you're interested. And finally, I would like to underline that Finland is also traditionally multicultural and bilingual society. According to the constitution, official languages of the country are Finnish and Swedish, although Swedish is, speak, is spoken only about 5% of the population. If you wish to make a career as a civil servant, you must speak both languages well. And in all schools of our country, students have to study the other state language at least three years. So there is a respect and official strong status of minority language in our country. Unfortunately, questions concerning language are still today sources for con conflict in many countries. So in conclusion, if there are differences, we need to talk rather than to prepare for a conflict. At the same time, we must, we, must, we must not forget that modern conflicts and confrontations within societies are not all about culture and religion. Culture and religion can serve more like a pretext or a kulis when the real conflict is about globalization, jobs, livelihood and security interests. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evarola. Uh, indeed, uh, as I said, uh, multiculturalism is a state policy of Azerbaijan, and it is uh, uh, seen not only in the internal uh, field of uh, Azerbaijani reality, but it can be traced also in foreign policy of Azerbaijan. And uh, speaking of uh, features of foreign policy, multi, uh, features of multiculturalism in the field of foreign policy, we have to note, first of all, Azerbaijani uh, doing uh, such kind, uh, organizing such kind of conferences, and uh, uh, as noted, Mr. Uh, Ariola, uh, excuse me, Ariola, uh, Azerbaijani uh, uh, participation in the uh, non-alignment movement, and as you know, uh, this year Azerbaijan will lead this coalition, and it is uh, very important. Uh, force in the contemporary inter international relations. And it is very important for Azerbaijan uh, to lead this policy. Multiculturalism helps him to have, uh, uh, to be more active in the foreign policy and uh, to lead these uh, principles of multiculturalism, also interculturalism, in its not only internal but also in uh, foreign policy. Uh, now I'd like to give floor to uh, 
Uh, Fuat Nurullaev, Deputy Chairman of the Caucasus um, Muslim Office. Teşekkür ederim itibar müəllim. Mən də Şeyh Hazretleri adından bütün tədbir iştirakçılarını, xüsusən də qonaqları salamlayıram və həmçinin Azərbaycanda din və dövlət münasibətlərinin multikulturalizmə verdiyi tövbələrlə bağlı bir neçə söz demək istəyirəm. Tarixən dünyada müxtəlif mədəniyyətlər mövcud olub. Bu mədəniyyətlər bir-birləri ilə sosial və qarşılıqlı anlaşma baxımından əlaqələr qurmuşdur. Zaman-zaman fərqli mədəniyyətlər arasında qarşılıqlı yer dəyişmələr də baş vermişdir. Bildiyimiz kimi, hər millət ayrı-ayrı mədəniyyət və ənənəyə sahibdir. Dinimiz də müxtəlif baxışların və fərqli mədəniyyətlərin yanaşı yaşaya bilməsini inkar etmir. Eyni zamanda müxtəlifliyi təqdir edir və multikultural ənənənin yayılması İslamın qarşı çıxmadığı məsələlər sırasındadır. Bu baxımdan Allah-u Teala Müqəddəs Quran-ı Kərimin Əl-Hucurat Surəsinin 13-cü ayəsində buyurur. Ey insanlar! Biz sizi bir kişi və bir qadından yaratdıq. Sonra bir-birinizi tanıyasız deyə sizi xaqlara və qəbilələrə ayırdıq. Multikulturalizm eyni bir ölkədə yaşayan müxtəlif xaqların nüvəndələrinin mədəni hüquqlarını tanıyan humanist dünya görünüşü və ona uyğun olan dəyərdir. Bu dəyərlər ayrıca götürülmüş ölkədə və bütövlükdə dünyada müxtəlif millətlərə və məsəblərə məxsus insanların mədəni müxtəlifliyinin qorunması, inkişafı, azsaylı xaqların dövlətlərin milli mədəniyyətlərinə inteqrasiyasına yönəldirib. Humanist və demokratik nəzəriyyə yaxud ideoloji olaraq multikulturalizm talenatlığın təcəssümüdür. Multikulturalizmin mövcud olmadığı cəmiyyətlərdə Humanizm, yüksək fərdi və beynəlxalq münasibətlər, mədəniyyəti, insanlar arasında qarşılıqlı anlaşma, qarşılıqlı zənginləşmə, dostluq və əməkdaşlıq mümkün deyil. Multikulturalizm, mədəniyyətlərin və sivilizasiyaların diyaloqudur. Bu baxımdan Azərbaycan multikulturalizmi ənənəvi siyasətinin çox yaxşı modelidir. Mədəniyyətlərin və dinlərin ənənəvi siyasəti sayəsində Azərbaycan Həmişə müxtəlif etnosların nümayəndələrinin mədəniyyətləri və dinlərinin inteqrasiyası məkanına çevrilib. Müsəlman, xristiyan və yahudi əhalisinin nümayəndələri arasındakı tolerant və dostluq münasibətləri Azərbaycan xalqının humanist ruhu, mədəniyyəti üçün hər zaman xarakterik olub. Azərbaycan müstəqilliyini bərpa etdikdən sonra ümumili liderimiz Heydər Əliyev həzrətlərinin müəyyənləşdirdiyi Siyasi kursa uyğun olaraq dövlət din münasibətlərinin tənzimlənməsi, vicdan azadlığının təmin edilməsi, milli mənəvi dəyərlərimizin qorunub saxlanması, tarixi dini abidələrimizin bərpası, multikulturalizmin təbliğ olunması sahəsində uğurlu yol keçmişdir. Bunun səbəbi Ulu Öndər Heydər Əliyevin formulaşdırdığı dövlət din münasibətləri sisteminin effektliyini təmin edən Başlıca amil həmin sistemin Azərbaycan xalqının xarakterik xüsusiyyətlərinə, dövrün müasir tələblərinə və vicdan azadlığının təmin olunmasının prinsiplərinə əsaslanmışdır. Qafqan müsəlmanları idarəsinin təbliğ etdiyi multikulturalizm dəyərləri İslamın ana qaynağı hesab edilən Qur'an-ı Kərimə və Peyğəmbərimizin kəlamlarına çökənmişdir. Belə ki, İslam mənbələrində Peyğəmbərimizin həyatı ilə bağlı Rəvayət nəql olunur, Allah elçisinin nə qədər multikultural dəyərlərə üstünlük verməsi göstərilmişdir. Rəvayətdə nəql olunur ki, İslam peyğəmbəri bir gün yaxın qohumu və sahabəsi İbni Abbasla birlikdə oturmuş, bu zaman bir dəstə insanın müşahiyyəti ilə dünyasını dəyişən şəxsin cənazəsi aparılırmış. Bunu görən peyğəmbər dərhal ayağa qalxır, İbni Abbas peyğəmbərə buyurur, Ya Rəsulallah! Gələn bir yahudi cənazəsidir. Sənin onun üçün ayağa qaxmağın nə deməkdir? Peyğəmbər isə İbni Abbasa, yahudi olsa belə, onu da bir ana dünyaya gətirmiş, 
bir ata erseğe çatdırmışdır, nəfəs alan, nəfəs verən insan övladı olmuşdur. Cavabını vermişdir. 2016-cı ildən etibaren multikulturalizm sahasində görülən işler daha da sürətlendi. Ölkədə keçirilən çoxsalı beynahı tədbirlərdə, dünyada milli, dini, tolerantlığın güzlendirilmesi, multikulturalist değerlerin təbliği, dini zeminde ekstremizmə və ayrı seçkiliyə karşı bircə mübarizə yollarının arşılması, fərqli dinlərin və mədəniyyətlərin daşıcısı olan insanlar arasında diyalog və karşılıqlı anlaşmanın bərqarar edilməsi və bir sıra aktual problemlər geniş müzakirə olunur. Qafqan Müslümanları İdarəsinin bu sahədə gördüyü işler, din xadimləri üçün təşkil olunan kurslar, hazırlanan xutbə vasitəleri, namaz zədvəlləri, multikultural, multikultural dəyərlərə bir daha öz tövbəsini vererek, dövlətimizin din siyasetine böyük uğurlar bəxş edir. Dəfələrlə çıxışlarında Qafqan Müslümanları İdarəsinin sədri Şeyhul İslam Hacı Allahşur Paşada Həzrətləri bu dəyərlərin hər bir Azərbaycanlı üçün ne kadar önemli olduğunu dilə getirmiştir. Azərbaycan Respublikasının Prezidenti İlham Əliyev Həzrətləri bütün dini mərasimlərlə bağlı rəsmi tədbirlər zamanı multikultural dəyərlərə böyük ehtiramla yanaşır. Ölkədə yaşayan inancıların beraber statusa maliş olduğunu hatırladır. Qafqan Süsanmanları İdarəsinin sədri Şeyh Hüsam Alaşucu Paşazada Həzrətlərinin dəvəti ilə Yahudi və Hristiyan konfesiya rəhbərləri ilə birlikdə her il Ramazan ayında iftar süfrəsini iştirak edir. Tədbirə ölkə başçısının, başçısının katılması tarayatlığın bariz nümunəsidir. Bu hadisə artıq ənənə halını alaraq bütün dünyaya multikulturalizm mesajı en büyük tarayatlık nümunəsinin təqdimatıdır. Minnettarım. Allah razı olsun. Amınızla. As I said, we have uh, seven uh, branches of Baku International Multiculturalism Center abroad, and one of the centers is in Germany. I would like to give floor to the head of the branch of the center in Germany, to Birgit Weisberber. Добрый день, уважаемые дамы и господа, дорогие друзья. Я всегда рада получить приглашение в Баку. Большое спасибо, я это очень тронуто. В большинстве случаев это приглашение связано с участием на форуме. Это для меня сегодня и вчера четвертый форум, который включен в багинский процесс. Но Участие на форуме это для, означает для меня постоянно выступить с речью. И из этого момента начинается, я начинаю волноваться, потому что иногда кажется, что все уже сказано и все уже слышано. А хочется -то вам что-то новое сказать. Пытаюсь. Давайте посмотрим немножко назад. Я получаю приглашение сюда, как было сказано, как представительница первого иностранного филиала Бакинского международного центра мультикультурализма. Этот Бакинский центр отмечает на днях пятилетия, поэтому поздравляю вас с наступающим праздником. Мы в Трездене, в Германии, чуть моложе, нам 4 года. В чем состоит наша задача? Я думаю, в первую очередь, знакомством немецкого населения со стороны Азербайджана, культурным традициям этой страны, истории и мультикультурной разобразности. И так как мы сейчас два года уже имеем веб-сайт, это немножко легче информировать о актуальных событиях. И она на этом месте уже часто жалела о том, что немецкая общ общественность очень мало из, как я научила, как это СМИ, из СМИ узнает о Азербайджане и о тех мирных инициативах, которые исходят из этого 
страны, а также мало знает о институционной поддержке всех этих инициатив к продвижению и стабилизации азербайджанского мультикультурного общества. От этого, к большим своим сожалениям, ничего не изменилось за последние годы. Насколько я могу это ценить, это прежде всего культурные и спортивные события, которые население связывает с Азербайджаном. Например, пару дней назад здесь состоялась эта «Формула-1», и, конечно, об этом сообщили. Этничная и культурная разобразность, конечно, и в Германии в последние годы увеличивалась. Но, как и во многих других европейских странах, это не воспринимается как положительное обогащение. Наоборот. И население, и я, и многие другие воспринимаем как глубоко глубоко разделенные и реальных подходов, чтобы уделить это не видно. И поэтому, если я сюда поеду, я себе спрашиваю, кого я, за кого я здесь говорю. Я за всю Германию вряд ли, за весь Трезден вряд ли, за улицу вряд ли. Это так, так тяжело, так что мне придется, я со себя говорю. Мы, конечно, как мы только это филиал Бакинского центра, мы один из некоторых учреждений, организаций в Трездене, которые имеют как бы э, мультикультурные... Э, вот сейчас слова нету. Бэкграунд. И получаем, конечно, и поддержкой от управления города Дрездена, который, это управление, которое занимается вопросом, вопросами интеграции. И ежегодно в Дрездене состоятся так называемые межкультурные дни. И у нас есть планы, это 29-й раз в этом году, и у нас есть планы принимать участие на этих дней. И мы проводим, планируем провести мероприятие под названием «Неизвестный Азербайджан. Страна огня». «Неизвестная страна», я думаю, это хорошее название. И если удастся это, как кажется, далекая страна Азербайджан поблизить немцам, то, я думаю, открываются новые возможности. Я думаю, что нам должен лучше удаться э, наши темы прицепить как бы, культурным и историческим опытом Германии. Хочу назвать один пример. В феврале 1945 -го года был разрушен э, город Трезден, родной мой город. И это травматические события все таки Такие близко теми опытами, которые э, Азербайджан прожил тоже во феврале 1992 э, -го года. И я думаю, если им, нам удастся просто здесь близость на, эмоционально, на эмоциональном уровне, это открывает новые возможности, открывать и, и сердце для другой э, стороны. Другой пример. Если нам удастся соединить опыты обоих стран в сохранении иных культур, в Дрездене находится, и это общество, я думаю, вообще не знает, одна из, одна из культурных ценностей, ценностей Азербайджана – это рукопись Деде Коргут. 
И я в декабре 2015 -го года по случаю конференции в Трестине я видела слезы в, в глазах азербайджанских ученых, когда они стояли непосредственно перед этой рукописью. Я, завтра я поеду в Гегель, бывший Хеленендов, и смотрю, какие следы немецкие переселенцы здесь оставили, когда, когда они 20, 200 лет тому назад сюда пришли и искали новую родину, и, и искали и нашли. И мы по случаю это нашего мероприятия в сентябре мы будем показать эту ходящую выставку, которая была э, изработана студентами Берлинского университета, и которая показывает эту историю. И, и я думаю, это возможности сплизать нашей наши страны мы конечно этим не решаем все проблемы это я знаю но начало надо сделать и начало конечно конечно сделано да я да на этом наверное кончаю uh, uh, 20 minutes more. I would like to open the floor for discussion. Maybe somebody would like <coughs> to make contribution. Okay. Swami Dijatesh, International Art of Living Foundation. Please. <coughs> Five minutes. <coughs> Thank you, honored guests. I'm very happy to be here in Azerbaijan. And the initiative that Azerbaijan has been taking repeatedly for so many years. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to imagine this world once with only one kind of an animal, one <coughs> kind of a fruit, only one vegetation, Just imagine this, this world with just one animal, one bird, one vegetation, how boring it would be. This world is beautiful because the nature is diverse. And so is this world beautiful because there are so many different cultures and so many different religions. So nature by nature is diverse. And we better understand this. The differences in people create conflict when seen with a narrow-mindedness. The same differences make this world much more beautiful when seen with a broad vision. And there's tremendous wisdom in all the cultures, in all the religions, the core values of all the cultures being love, compassion, honesty, service, and such. This wisdom, my dear friends, I would, look, I would like to call it spirituality, as mentioned by our honored guests just before some time, the darkness in the heart, or the one-to-one the -one interaction which we need to do. I think that is, that is spirituality. It's the spirit which catches on. It's the spirit which needs to be kindled. It's the spirit which, which, is, which we all which is one in all of us, which has to be, you know, like, like a lit candle can, lit, can light a thousand candles, but you cannot light a candle from a picture of a candle. So this spirituality can move on only by one-to-one -one personal interactions, like very well mentioned just a little while ago. And it's the responsibility of faith leaders like us to spread this message of unity. 
This has been the effort of the Art of Living and its founder, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar Ji, for the last four decades. Two things which I would just like to mention as an action in this, how to transform this dialogue into an action. <coughs> One is kindling spirituality. We need to have techniques, we need to have processes with which that spiritual thing can be kindled. And second is the role of mediation. For a dialogue, you need someone who can mediate, someone who is spiritually heightened to mediate among people and carry the dialogue forward. So with these two suggestions, I would like to rest my voice. I would like to thank the government of Azerbaijan, the President, His Excellency Ilham Aliyev, and Baku International Multiculturalism Center for all the effort which they are putting. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, would you like somebody to... Okay. Now I would like to thank everybody, particularly our distinguished speakers, for participation in, participating in this uh, session. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Basha Korashi. I represent, I'm general secretary of uh, a European organization called AMISCO, European Muslim Initiative for Social Cohesion. It's not a religious organization, but an organization which works with lobbying to European Commission and Parliament, and also trying to raise awareness among Muslim communities for their own situation in the countries they live in. I have, li I have listened very carefully what all the panelists have said, and I believe that the people of faith who have spoken about religion, but they did not speak about interculturalism. They talked mostly about religion, uh, religious co cooperation with each other. Having said that, I wish to put a question to the, to the panel, even they don't have time. But the question is, how can we, in this European reality today, change interfaith dialogue and cooperation into intercultural cooperation? Because I have lived in Europe for 50 years, and I can see that my life and the life of millions of people with Muslim background is becoming tougher. I will not call it becoming hell, but it is very close to that. So it is good to have an uh, interfaith dialogue, but let's make it cooperation and include that into cultural, because culture and religion are not the same thing. They are two very different things. And I also would like to say thank you to the, to the center for inviting me, even if um, I didn't get time to say what I was asked to say. But it's very important that Islamophobia is not forgotten because it's yes. getting worse. I come from Denmark. Now we have people coming to the parliament who burn Quran in the public and put bacon on it and throw it on the floor. And he is going to be the member of parliament. So please, for heaven's sake, look at very carefully what is happening in reality, because a priest and a rabbi and an imam can talk to each other, but what is happening in Europe is quite different. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your contribution and for your uh, question. Yes, you are right that we have to think about uh, to changing intercultural uh, uh, dialogue into inter uh, interface 
uh, dialogue. Yes, it is very important, and multiculturalism, I think, uh, uh, means that uh, it is related to this issue because multicultural, when we say about multiculturalism, it is unlike other uh, possible uh, policy models, it is uh, directed, first of all, to protection of ethnic, uh, religious, racial, and cultural uh, diversities. And it is very important. Diversity is important, as I said. It is a value, but uh, if it is not regulated or not properly regulated by state, it can uh, cause some problems in various fields. Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating in this conference. And I would like to thank, uh, uh, first of all, our distinguished uh, speakers, uh, I hope we will have such kind of event, events uh, in future. As I said, uh, Baku, uh, Azerbaijan hosts uh, many uh, kinds of forums uh, in, uh, in the field of intercultural dialogue, and uh, it is the fifth and uh, see you uh, in the next uh, sixth forum on intercultural dialogue. Thank you.